Sahih Al Bukhari, page 786, volume 2. This hadith provides clear evidence that the face of the woman mentioned above was uncovered. Imam Sarkhasi deduced from this that the woman's face is not an essential part of Satr. Mabsud, page 152, volume number 10. The commandment of seeing the face and the hands. So far, we have discussed above the issue of seeing the face. However, it is unanimous determination of Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahmatullah, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, and Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Rahmatullah, Alayhim Ajma'een, that in, if the act of seeing the face is with the intention of sexual desire or immorality, or if it would cause any disruption in the society, that is fitna, then such permission of covering the face will be invalid, rather it will be haram. If no such in intent prevails, then seeing of the face and the hands is indeed not disallowed. Imam Sarkhasi states, But we follow the traditions of Hazrat Imam Ali al-Murtaza and Hazrat Ibn Abbas Therefore, about the permissibility of seeing the face and the hands, a hadith can be found. To illustrate this phenomenon, the hadith narrated by Hazrat Sahil ibn Saad عنه, has also been mentioned above. Once, Amir al Mu'mineen, Hazrat Faruq e Azam was deliver delivering his Friday sermon and said, Do not excessively raise the amount of mahar. Listening to this, a woman who had reddish cheeks stood up and asked, Are you saying this on your own? Or did you hear it from the Holy Prophet ﷺ? Because we find it against what is mentioned in the Quran. The narrator of this incident describes the complexion of the woman's face. This incident clearly describes that saying of the face was allowed at that time. At one occasion, the Holy Prophet ﷺ saw the hand of a woman that was not painted with henna. He asked that if it was the hand of a male or a female. It proved again that the hands of a female can be uncovered and can be seen. Once Hazrat Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha handed over her son Hazrat Hassan or Hazrat Hussain to Hazrat Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu or Hazrat Anas. And Hazrat Anas reported that he saw the hands of Hazrat Fatima to Zahra and it was shining like a moon. This narration clearly explains the permissibility of seeing women's face and hands. Thus, face is for the applying of surma, that is kohol, in the eyes, and the hands is for wearing the ring. Mabsud al sarkhasi page 152, volume number 10. Regarding the prohibiting, regarding prohibiting the act of uncovering the face and hands. We have shown that if social circumstances are favorable and a woman is going out of her house without having a dire need, then she should cover all parts of her body, including her face and hands with a veil. However, if eyes could be however, eyes could be kept uncovered to see the way. Sahih al Bukhari page seven eighty six, volume two. With reference to this in the Holy Quran it is stated O Prophet Wasallam, you tell your wives, daughters, and other Muslim women that they should hang covers over them. Surah al ahzab page 59 Benefit In this ayah, hanging cover means covering body in such a way with a cloth that the whole body including the face could be covered, leaving no parts visible as narrated by Hazrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu that jilbab is a clothing that covers the whole body from the head to toe leaving the eyes part partially covered to view the way explanation of this has been given by ibn jarir ibn manzir and others though muhammad ibn sirin who describes the same with the reference of ubaidush salamani and also alama ibn jarir tabri Narrated by the commentary of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu Ruh al Maani, page 22, page 89 Tafsir Ibn Jarir, page 46 Nevertheless, older women are exempt from such restrictions as is mentioned in the Quran Translation And those women who sit at home and do not expect to marry So there is no sin on them if they keep their covers off and show their adornment Surah Nur, verse 60 Benefit 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah grants permission to the older women who do not expect to marry anymore to take their hijab or jilbab off when outside. Such exception does not extend towards other women as they cannot come without a hijab or a parda before the strangers and those that they are forbidden to appear without the restrictions required by the religious laws. Hazrat Qais bin Shamas Rahmatullah Alayhi narrates A woman who was known by the name of Umm Khalid appeared before Prophet Sallallahu in such a way that her face was covered with a veil and inquired about her martyred son. A Sahabi asked her that you come to ask about your son and your face is covered in a veil? She replied, Yes, tragedy has befallen upon yes, tragedy had befallen on my son, but not on my modesty. The Holy Prophet told her that her son will be given the reward of two martyrs. She asked him why. The Holy Prophet replied, Because he is murdered by the people of the book, that is Ahl Kitab. Narrated in Abu Dawud, hadith number two four eight eight. It is clear that no no one has any objection that why she was wearing the veil. She did not entail any harm in doing so and keeping her modesty up. Therefore, when women are not going out of out for a particular reason or for some a certain need, the covering of the face should be practiced. Translation: It is narrated by Hazrat Hafsa bin S- Ibn Sirin radiallahu ta'ala anha that she asked the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam that if anyone of us does not have the jilbab, would it be sinful to not to go to the Eidgah? The Holy Prophet sallallahu instructed that she should borrow jalbab from her female friends to come to the Eidgah. Sahih al-Bukhari, page 134, volume 1. It is now clear now it is now clearly understood that how important it is it is to observe parda even to go to the Eidgah it is required to wear jalbab or observe complete parda women of those of those days were not used to going to the Eidgah without complete hijab those women who ignore this obviously commit serious sin narrated by umul mu'minin hazrat aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha she narrated we were in the condition of ihram when some people riding on their animals were passing by. As they came near us, we put on our sheets over our heads and covered our faces. When they went away, we uncovered our faces. Narrated in Abu Dawud, hadith number 1933. Benefit Without having any excuse, the rationale of observing the covering of the face has been adequately discussed. You can imagine how the females of the time of the Holy Prophet ﷺ used to observe modesty and used to follow the rules of the Sharia in their personal observances. In those days, dur- during Hajj or Umrah, it was forbidden to touch the face with cloth. But Purda was so common among Sahabi, Sahabia women that they used to observe it strictly depending upon the situation. The commandment of observing Purda or woman, for, for women the real order for the woman is to protect her chastity within the four walls of her house and keep herself away from the contact of strange men, as stated in the Quran. Translation And stay in your houses. Ayah number 33 of Surah Al Ahzab. This is addressed to the wives of the Holy Prophet. The same applies to other women. It is not disallowed for them to leave the house, but when they do, they must observe the appropriate restrictions. According to one hadith narrated by Hazrat Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu ta'ala anhu, woman is someone to be hidden. When she steps out, the devil follows her. Sunan Tirmizi, Ibn Habban. Ibn Habban radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Ibn Khuzayma mentions this hadith in, ad- in their works and another with another addition. When woman is within the confines of her house, she is closer to Allah, her Rabb. Targhib Manzar, Volume 1, page 136. In another hadith narrated by Ibn Abdullah bin Masood, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, praying for women in her, in, in her inner quarters of her house is preferred over praying in the outer quarters. And even praying in the outer quarters is more preferable than praying in the, in the courtyard of her house. Narrated in, Ab- in Abu Dawud, Kanzul Amal, page 259, Volume 8. Obviously, this preference has 
here refers to greater reward in privately praying within the confines of her house. It brings greater reward to the women than praying outside. In another hadith, it is stated, Your praying in your house is preferable to praying behind me. That, that, that is the Holy Prophet وسلم, in the masjid. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates that the act of woman leaving her house is not considered good unless she is compelled to do so. Kanzul Amal, Tibrani, page 263, volume 8. I have endeavored to elicit the principles of moder moder moderation in Islam, where relaxation is given within the reasonable limit to uncover the face and hands. Any types of extremism in the name of liberalism or in the name of devotedly, devotedly practicing Islam is not permitted. Evidently, any notion of extremism does not have any place in Islam. Rules and laws are made to safeguard the honor, chastity, respect and protection of women. In situations of fear or endangerment, the relaxation of keeping the face and the hands uncovered becomes absolutely necessary as it has been elucidated above in an enormous detail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best.